So first off, this watch is a 2,000 meter diver, which is no small feat in itself. Uh, and as you can see from the bulkiness of the case, this thing is really designed to travel deep. Now, obviously, the deepest that a human has been able to reach is something like about 230, maybe 250 meters. But the point of a watch like this is like it will absolutely <laughs> survive that kind of uh, climate. So if you are a professional diver, you know, some sort of deep sea uh, salvage or oil expert, this is something that should be on your radar. This is absolutely a great professional watch and has some fantastic features that are uh, really set it apart from Rolex or Omega. And I want to explain them to you now. So first of all, let's talk about the outside of the case. So first of all, we are talking uh, stainless steel uh, case for obvious reasons, but it's not just stainless steel. This thing has been hardened by a process known as EBE 2000. Now this is the same process that they use to harden aircraft turbine blades. So the way this works is you take the steel, well, you know, because because you're a blacksmith, so this is how you do it. <laughs> so, so you take the steel, you uh, heat it up and infuse it with carbon atoms and then bombard that with electrons for several days until it achieves a hardness of 2000 Vickers. Now, 2000 Vickers may not seem like anything to you. It certainly didn't to me when I first heard the term, but then Here's the perspective. So you all know how hard sapphire is. Only really a diamond or a really hard knock can scratch sapphire because it's that hard. Well, 2000 Vickers is about the hardness of the sapphire crystal. So think about that. The hardness of the steel is the same hardness as the sapphire crystal on this watch. And this sapphire is thick, by the way. <laughs> and uh, also this has nine layers of anti-reflective coating either side of the glass. So this is about as anti-reflective as it gets. And even the AR coating is again to match the 2000 Vickers hardness. I don't know how they do that, but apparently that's what they do. The bezel is a ceramic bezel, which as I've explained in previous episodes, I don't particularly care for ceramic, but this is coated with a sapphire layer around the bezel. So, and of course that sapphire being at 2000 Vickers. So basically what you have here is the hardness of the shell of this watch is as thick and as tough as it can get. This is as scratch resistant and as, uh, as bulletproof as any watch is ever likely to get. But that's not all, that's not where it ends. So now let's talk about the movement. Now the movement in this is the BE36AE, but otherwise known as a modified ETA2836, which is a fantastic movement, nothing wrong with that. This is a, a movement that's used in a lot of luxury watches, and this is chronometer rated. So important to remember that this retains uh, an excellent accuracy. And at the moment, this watch is running at around about plus two seconds a day. So, you know, that's well within COSC uh, certification. And it has to be pointed out that this is not actually COSC certified. It is ISO certified because COSC certification is for Swiss watches and the ISO certificate from the Glasuta Observatory is for basically everybody else. It's the same thing uh, with the HK Precision Technologies 5000 movement or the PT 5000. That's also has a uh, an ISO certificate, not a COSC certificate. So I just want to make that delineation here. Now, as you can see on the dial, it's pretty much your typical three-handed watch. You have an hour hand, a minute hand, and a sweeping second hand. This beats at 28,800 vibrations per hour, which results in a beautiful, smooth sweeping hand, as is typical with that sort of movement. And I mean, just look at that. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous display. Uh, and I love the simplicity of this dial. It's uh, it's really nice uh, compared to previous iterations of the S2000, which also had a day date complication. Uh, so this one just has a date complication, which it doesn't necessarily need, but it's kind of handy on a dive watch. I mean, let's face it, you know, you don't just use a dive watch only for diving. You also use it for traveling. The whole point of a dive watch is it's just, it's simply a sports watch. It's a, it's a hard wearing watch. So having a few complications built in is necessarily uh, not necessarily going to be a bad thing. And in the case of this, they have uh, taken away the uh, day complication and just left the date. And it, it very much unclutters the dial. It's uh, something that 
could really be said to be very beautiful about this dial is it's just there's not too much to it it's not crazy on the text as you can see it just says supermarine and the depth rating and Bremont up the top nice and easy and because it's a nice big uh, dial it's a 45 millimeter width it just means that there's just lots of space there so it breathes real nice and you've got a nice inner chapter ring with some markings on the inside and of course the bezel which uh, retains uh, minute markings all the way around the crown here is uh, protected by a little bit of a guard and it's a screw down crown obviously and yeah it's just really nice and it has the you can just see here the Bramont logo on the the, uh, the crown, so it's just really, really gorgeous. Now this is on the steel bracelet. This actually did originally come on the rubber strap. I did do a video, if you look back in my video library, of when I uh, got the bracelet, because I special ordered that one. They were nice enough to let me order this, because this bracelet is only for this watch. It's only for this edition. You actually can't buy it for the previous edition, which is a bit of a shame, because I feel like, you know, if you're... A, uh, an owner of a previous S2000, it'd be kind of nice to have this bracelet. And the, the main difference is that this has this, um, hang on, I'll just take it off this. It has this wonderful deployment clasp, which, uh, hang on, I'll just uh, show you is in two parts. There you go, so you get this uh, this really one. Look at that back, by the way, that back plate is just <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. I love that seven bladed propeller thing. It's just, uh, it's just really great. But yeah, there is micro adjustment built into the clasp itself just here. So you've, uh, you've got a bit of a range of motion to, uh, to change it. And there's even a diver's extension just here. So this is, you know, genuinely made for divers. It's a really great little, uh, bracelet. There you go. And that's, uh, that's it complete. And yes, it's a heavy watch. <laughs> it's, uh, I've, I've not weighed it, but it definitely weighs in a lot more, uh, weightier than any other watch that I have, but it doesn't end there. There is one more aspect of this watch to talk about. And that is that it comes with the Martin Baker shock mount system. Now this is something that Bremont made in association with Martin Baker. Martin Baker is a company that makes ejection seat technology for 70% of the world's fighter aircraft. So the idea being is that um, Bremont or Martin Baker, I forget exactly who talked to who, but the idea is, is that usually if a pilot ejects from an aircraft, the one of the main casualties of, the, of that event other than the aircraft is that a pilot's watch will usually be torn to shreds by the g-forces involved it will break the watch because the mechanics inside are just simply not designed to handle that unless it's a quartz watch of course but we are talking from a mechanical watch point of view so the martin baker shock mount system was designed to withstand those forces and they actually uh, had live tested this in an uh, actual live ejection. So, uh, and of course it passed. So the Martin Baker shock mount system is now in most Bremont watches, most notably their Martin Baker line, which is a pilot's watch of itself. It's a nice enough watch, not really my sort of thing. I'm more into dive watches, but it's nice to know that that uh, shock mount system is in this watch as well. And on top of that, you have a Faraday cage built into this thing. So this thing has great anti-magnetic properties because of the Faraday cage. It comes with a glycidur balance, which in of itself is also anti-magnetic, I believe. Anyway, don't correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's the whole point of that. Then we also have the Martin Baker shock mount system. We have this steel shell, which is hardened by this ridiculous process, <laughs> which as I say, is used for aircraft turbine blades, this EBE 2000 process. You can read up more about that on the Bremont website, if you like, and very thick, fully coated sapphire crystal. This watch is as beefy as it is possible for, for a watch to get. And of course, 2000 meter rated resistance to water pressure. You really can't go wrong with this sort of a watch. So this watch is not cheap. This watch clocked in at a crazy amount, something like $7,200. And that was on the rubber strap on the bracelet. It costs even more, but uh, as you can see, it's really worth the time. It's just a gorgeous piece. Oh yes, and it also has a helium escape valve. Almost forgot to mention that. Uh, so, you know, you are talking as professional as it gets as a diver. Now let's uh, show you some of the bezel action here. As you can see, that's just a really nice detent. And 120 click, of course, because what else would it be? And the bezel alignment is as sharp as I have ever seen a watch be, so definitely no problems there. 
This is simply a really great dive watch. Yes, there are watches that will dive deeper than this, but at the same time, I've never seen a watch that has as much class and style as this uh, packed into a shell that's actually on the more affordable scale of a deep diving watch. I mean, okay, sure, the Rolex Sea Dweller will go deeper, but you're also paying 25 grand for that. So, you know, 25 versus uh, seven and a half, makes sense, right? And one thing I really, really dig about uh, how Bremont make their watches with these beautiful designs in the lugs and the, uh, the, the main barrel. And this is what they call their triptych case design with uh, the back plate, the main barrel and the lugs that go together. And I just, I've never seen a watch with this kind of configuration. It's just, it looks somehow futuristic and vintage at the same time. They, they've really reinvented the wheel very well here with this really great lug design. And it's just gorgeous to see. And that was actually one of the things that really uh, struck me about this watch is just how uh, comfortable it is to wear. I mean, once I put it on, I was kind of like, why does this fit better than the S500? <laughs> and that's not to say that I thought the S500 fit badly. That was a nice watch too. And certainly it does matter on your wrist size. I mean, I have seven and a half inch wrists it makes sense. I'm a big beefy guy. Uh, you know, big beefy watch definitely, uh, you know, suits me better than, than it will someone with smaller than seven inch wrists. And that's not to say you couldn't wear one. If you're someone with wrists smaller than seven inches and you prefer something that obviously is a little bit more comparable to your weight and size, then you have two other versions of this watch to check out. There is the S500 and the S300. And they both have very similar spec, except obviously in terms of depth rating. I mean, this one has this uh, ridiculous you know 2000 uh, meter value which obviously no one's <laughs> ever going to need unless you are literally a professional uh, you know diver but at the same time it's it's not just about uh, necessarily the depth rating it's also the size i like this size it works well for me uh, i also like the s500 that i think that fits me uh, almost as well it's it's like it's 43 millimeter and yet somehow it wears a little smaller. Even this one with its 45 millimeter diameter, somehow it seems to wear smaller. Like I've seen Breitlings that are um, 46 and 47 millimeters that wear slightly smaller too, and others that seem slightly wider. It's it's a very odd phenomenon. So not sure exactly what causes that, but uh, but this watch being 45, it's big. The uh, the S500 is 43 and the S300 is about, I believe, 40. So the S300 is comparable in size to that of, uh, well, more like a, an Omega Seamaster 300M and maybe a Tudor Black Bay. I was going to say like maybe the Rolex Submariner, but at the same time, the Submariner is a damn sight thinner. And even like the, the new classes of Omega Seamaster are quite a bit thicker these days, clocking in at around about 14 millimeters in height. Now this one obviously clocks in at a whopping 18 millimeters, but I'd like to point out that in case you're wondering if, you know, if this is just going to stick off your wrist looking like a rather unflattering piece of technology, uh, I would point out that this backplate tends to disappear into your wrist, so you're really only wearing about 14 to 15 millimeters off the wrist. It's still big, I'm not going to lie, <laughs> and I, you know, I'm not going to say it's, it's not. But it definitely doesn't feel uncomfortable, and uh, and I say that as I wear this all the time, I wear this around. I have worn this for a solid year, uh, on and off the wrist, obviously, between other watches, and I can only say that it's uh, there's no way I'm getting rid of this. This is in my collection for life. Uh, I love it. It's a great watch. I have nothing but good things to say about this watch. Uh, in terms of, like, any negatives, it's all kind of subjective at this point. Some people may not necessarily like the design of the case, uh, but that's down to your own particular personal stance on aesthetic. It's also down to how heavy a watch you like to wear. If you don't like a heavy watch, then this ain't for you. <laughs> this is not going to work. I like a watch with heft. I like to know that it's on my wrist. Um, I don't know why I like that, I just do. I, I seem to trust it more. This is why I don't like watches made of titanium. They just feel too damn light. I don't like the sensation. And I have no idea, I can't really quantify or explain why I don't like that. I just, I just simply don't. So I prefer stainless steel. I prefer the heaviness. It's just my own preference. Uh, I love the, the colors and the, the, the whole aesthetic scheme of this watch. Really like the bracelet. They've done a really nice job on this. Uh, previous Bramont bracelets have been a little less 
uh, interesting in terms of the fact that they have just a very simple uh, clasp and two micro adjustment holes which is like why <laughs> you really couldn't spring for four uh, you know or even a diver's extension so yes some of those things make you scratch your head and think uh Bramant, i don't think you quite understand Vermont doesn't tend to get well recognized out there and particularly here in North America it's uh, it's kind of like looked down upon a bit if you go to any sort of uh, dealer uh, for watches and say hey do you do Vermont they'll all look at like no we, we don't want those it's like well why not it's like nobody wants to buy them it's like that's kind of circular reasoning no one's ever going to want to buy one if you don't ever try to sell one <laughs> so you know there's a bit of a snobbiness attitude towards other luxury watches and I get it you know these uh, all these these dealers have their own particular contracts with certain watch groups and everything. Makes sense that they're going to only cater for their own, but, but it's a bit of a shame because Bramont really should be uh, taken a bit more seriously. So I have two of these. I have the Supermarine S2000 and I have the Supermarine S500. Uh, I wish I had the S500 here to show you. Sadly, as I said, it's in the UK being fixed right now. Uh, I hope that I'll get it back before Christmas, but <laughs> we'll see. Unfortunately, postal uh, services being what they are, uh, well, we'll see what happens. I do have my eye on the Supermarine Chronograph, the blue edition. This watch really ticks all the boxes for me. I mean, I've been looking for kind of the watch for a time, and I don't think they'll ever really be the watch. Uh, there's a lot of different ones that I'd like. Uh, I've had my eye on various uh, types of Omegas, maybe a Rolex, but I'm kind of, I'm really sort of settling into the fact that Rolex is something I'll simply never own because I don't have the money and, you know, I want a new one. I'm not willing to pay grey market prices. I want to pay list price and it's just not possible and me and everybody else in the world so I don't feel bad <laughs> and so I kind of moved on from that and in a way uh, and in fact this is a future review I'll do which is with the Tudors with the Black Bay and the Black Bay GMT I feel like Tudor is what Rolex used to be this really good hard wearing tool watch which like you know is not too expensive it's not too cheap it's like it's really well made beautifully finished got great engineering and ev everything like that so Tudor has really inherited the spirit of Rolex and Rolex is just doing whatever the hell it wants these days so um, yeah I, I'm quite excited to review the Tudor watches that I've had as I said I've been wearing the Black Bay on my wrist for a couple of months now and I love it uh, I wasn't sure about it initially when I got it and I'm not entirely sure what made me buy it I was just kind of like okay I'm in the mood for this I sold my Seamaster 300M in order to pay for that uh, which some would say, you know, well, <laughs> you shouldn't have done that because the Omega might be worth more. I don't know. I don't know. I think that the Tudor Black Bay is a really fantastic watch. And I'm not sorry that I sold the, the, the Omega. Well, I say that now. I might be in a couple of years' time. <laughs> but the, the, the Black Bay is a gorgeous watch. It really is. I have the Black Bay Heritage 41mm and I'm loving every bit of it. It's just there's nothing that I find objectionable about whether the watch is pure perfection in a watch. Now, how does this stack up against the Bramont here? Well, uh, <laughs> let's just say that if it comes to the ultimate test of which watch do you grab in the apocalypse, you know, the, this this su supposed moment uh, as watch collectors have in our mind where some, for some bizarre reason, we are given like all of 10 seconds to grab a watch, just one, and uh, walk out the door. Well, I'm go I would have to break that rule. I'd have to break, uh, I'd have to take two because <laughs> I would have I would have my Bramont Supermarine and I'd have my uh, Tudor Black Bay because uh, both those watches are fantastic and I wouldn't want to do without either of them if you really put a gun to my head and, and told me to choose just one <laughs> geez I don't know I gotta say though the Tudor maybe 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 uh, I really love this watch, I really do, uh, and uh, between the two of them it is a difficult prospect. And that's, uh, you know, the reason I'm saying this is because that will show you just how much I think of the Bramont Supermarine. I mean, this is like a contender to be my best watch. That's not a place that is easily held. I think most watch collectors will agree that you know, your, your best watch, your favorite watch, is, is a, a very high stature to attain for any watch. So, uh, And most of us will say it ain't any singular watch. <laughs> so now, 
I could s safely say that this is easily within my top two watches. And as I said, my uh, Tudor Black Bay is definitely running in at, uh, at number two, sometimes it's number one, it's, they sort of teeter between the two. Here's the two side by side. And between the two of these, these are two absolutely gorgeous watches. It would be impossible for me to really choose one over the other. I, I need both. <laughs> and uh, uh, the Tudor is, uh, as you can see here, is uh, is just gorgeous, really well made. And uh, I have a lot to say about that in a future review. But between the two of these watches, I really do love them both. And uh, I consider these on a par in terms of quality and, uh, and loveliness. So thank you all very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this review of the Supermarine S2000. I've certainly enjoyed talking about it and I hope that my enthusiasm for it comes across and uh, makes you go and check out Bramont. Uh, you can go check out their website, bramont.com and um, see for yourself. But yeah, I love it. I'm never getting rid of this. So thank you all and see you in the next one.